in a second. Yes, what you are saying, Brandy. They said we don't have to do anything. It's Saturday. Yes. We have to do nothing. But uh, the world outside pushes us to do something. And that is a fundamental human problem. Problem is the same for thousands of years. Fundamental problems of human race is freedom from fear, freedom from insecurity. And it is the same with the rest of the animal kingdom. But we have more refined way of dealing with the fear. Car insurance. Life insurance, see that. Uh, that causes lot of challenges. Namaste. Namaste. Kaise hai sir? Tik tak. Now let us mute it. Otherwise, I will listen to your honey. <laughs> so you see that human problem. We have, we have, yes, it is, it is, human problem is the same for thousands of years. We have found out a very refined way with the dealing with the problem. Well, for what? To survive and to, to have a security. And the wealth keep lying in my current and saving account and I'm gone. <laughs> Insurance continues until <laughs> someone near and dear says, oh, you have gone. <laughs> he is gone. You see, this Eastern wisdom gives you a new way of thinking. a new insight that fundamental problems of our life caused by the fear, insecurity, unhappy, being crazy, can be solved totally in a different way. This is all about our and you see the solution offered by the Eastern wisdom gives a shock. We don't think in that way. People come to me and they say, you know, I have a lot of stress. No, you are, your nature is permanent peace and happiness. Come on, you are talking of stress and suffering. You don't have any stress. So many people leave. They said, this guy seems to be crazy. <laughs> you see, it is the other way around. It is just, so it gives, it amazes. It's surprise. But those who keep hooked to the teacher, they change. Those who do not, they continue with the flow of the word outside that is made up of suffering. Are you getting it? That is made up of suffering. So a seeker 
in this journey, seeker in this journey of the Eastern wisdom, you can say like a researcher, he or she takes a case study of himself and herself. You know, when you do a case study, you should, your intellect should be refined, you should be focused, you should be ready. So as a seeker, so who is a seeker? Who takes the case study? Case study of home, myself, myself. Case study of myself. That is very important. If we take the case study to study myself, my life, this is all about the three steps. I do not know. Let me know it. I do not understand. Let me understand it. And I don't experience, so let me practice and experience. So here, the case study this master talks about in a very simple way. <clears throat> Understand what is waking state, what is dream state, what is sleep state. And check if you are a waker then you are not a sleeper because in a waking state, you don't know what is sleep and dream. If you are a dreamer only, then in dream, you don't know what is a waking state and what is a sleep state. So either you are one of the three or you are none of the three. Case study. Huh? As a seeker, I take myself, you know, let me do the case study. Am I a waker? Am I a sleeper? Am I a dreamer? And the master says we transcend, we are beyond all the three states. And going beyond the three states is what is the journey of the mindfulness. Is the journey of the mindfulness. And uh, what I started with it is today's session that human problem, it's a fundamental human problem. Fear, insecurity. <clears throat> to, to get rid of that, I want a permanent peace, happiness, love, and wisdom. Do you still remember when I say that do you love, do you love peace? Yes, I love peace. So peace is your nature. Why I don't live in peace has to be done as a case study on myself. Oh, simple. Simple. Once I do that case study, I reveal that it is due to the ignorance and this master helps us to understand, to know the reality, to know the reality. So let us go back again what we have uh, understood in the last session, waking state. I become aware of the body, sense organ, the world outside, my pain, my suffering, my pleasure, my attachment, and my everything. So what happens in a waking state? I am the body and the mind. But in dream state, I am not the body. I am the mind only. But in sleep state, I am neither the body nor the mind. So either I am one of them or I am none of them. That makes sense, isn't it? Masters, our masters always talk of common sense. Simple. 
Now we should go a little deeper into the waking state because the journey of mindfulness will only succeed in a waking state. Have you understood that part? That in a dream state, we cannot achieve mindfulness. In sleep state, we cannot achieve the state of mindfulness. Awakening and realization cannot take place. Just see that. We all are wakers at present. Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> or sometime our mind is dreaming, even we start daydreaming. So that is why we need to be a seeker. Now, see that? Uh, my mind should maintain my awareness and attention, what we are exploring. So now understand so clearly. It's very clear. I see all of you. You see all of them. So when I see Brandy, I have a thought. I see Brandy, I see Ashok, I see Samir, I see David, I see Jerry, I see... K you know, you see that objects are different, so the thoughts are different. So simple. But that very I is common. Do you see that? I see Brandy, I see all of you, I see... So I is common with every object, with every person, I have a different thought, isn't it? I cannot say all are brandy. That is how the mind understands. I cannot say all are cat, eight, sorry. Do you see that? So I become aware here and now. A Saturday's journey is not doing anything, but living into that awareness. Are you getting it? We, our goal is to explore in the presence of millions of objects, millions of thoughts, I is a common factor, then what is this I? Who is this I? Did you understand up to until this point? Are you aware of the who is this I? I is listening to me, but who is this I? The mind claims I'm in a waking state. My ears sound goes strikes to the ears. The mind processes the information and I am listening. I always say to study this teachings of this master, sit on a lazy, you know, lazy boy chair. And maintain your awareness and explore who am I. Let us go a little deeper. When I say, I know Brandy, it is a thought. But can that thought be expressed without consciousness? Can you express that I know Brandy in deep sleep? Answer is no. So consciousness is behind that thought. Are you clear? It takes us to a very deeper journey. We have to be a seeker. We should be able to maintain that level of awareness and attention to explore who am I. So I say I know Brandy, 
it seems only one thought, but it has two parts. Can you guess? What is that? What are the two parts? Randy as an object for me. Huh? And I. Clear? I'm going slowly. I know Stephen is a thought. First thing. Second thing. It has an object. What is that object? It is there is a Stephen, the word, or a person. What is the third one? I. That is knowledge. That is the third part. Are you getting it? No, let us understand in a different way. What is perception? What is knowledge? What is awareness? What is experience? When I say I perceive you, I know you. When I say I know you, I experience you. So we use the different term. Our perception, knowledge, awareness, these things. So when I say, I know Stephen, it means this thought of a Stephen plus consciousness. I know Brandy, thought of a Brandy plus consciousness. I know David, thought of David plus consciousness. Clear? I have to just become aware. Here and now. Okay, I will sleep and then I will think about it. It will not work. <laughs> it will not work. You will miss the whole path. Uh, you will miss the journey. You know, this master is a remarkable. So can I say that knowledge appears one, but it has two parts? Thought plus consciousness. If there is no consciousness there, I cannot express that any thought. Right? So thought plus consciousness is knowledge, is perception, is cognition, is experience. Am I going too deep? No, it's nothing is deep, you know, it is, it is just clear. I know Stephen, I'm repeating again, Stephen is an object for me. Part of an object is different from the object. When I say I know David, David as a person is different from the thought of a David. And thought has two parts, objects plus consciousness. So there are actually four things there in every thought, in every perception in every knowledge, in a waking state. Can you have any thought without an object? Let me know. You cannot have any thought without an object. That object may be an event, may be a person, a when the moment you say, I am stressed, that stress is an object. Object. Then there is a thought. Second point. Third, then there is a knowledge in the thought. 
fourth point is consciousness. Remove the consciousness. Can you have a thought? Remove the consciousness. Can I have a cognition about anything? Do I know anything without consciousness? Ashok, you cannot know your honey without consciousness. And that is different from <laughs> that is different from Ashok. Are you getting it? Master says we are that consciousness. Object changes, thought changes, knowledge in the thought also changes, but the consciousness remains safe. Bulb, camera, bulb is there, but electricity which is hidden behind the bulb never changes. Just a rough example. Rough example. And we can be aware of that consciousness here and now. And when you live into that consciousness, you identify yourself that I am that consciousness, you are already into meditation. What is a thought? Go back again. There are many ways to understand what is what is a thought. Don't go into the grammar and the words. You know, what is a thought? Thought cannot exist without an object. Think of it. And where lies the object? Outside you? Clear? That makes the mind move outside. We forget ourselves. We forget the electricity is behind that bulb, behind the fan, behind the AC. And that forgetfulness is known as ignorance. And that is why every master says, huh, when you remove this ignorance, you are into the state of mind. Here and now. In a waking state, we have understood there are four things. Object, that may be any person, an event, our experience, our feeling, our ignorance, our knowledge. Second is the thought. Third, the knowledge in the thought. When I say I know a shok, it means I have a knowledge. And the fourth is consciousness. We get lost in the thought. We get lost in the object pertaining to the thought. We are lost in the knowledge in that thought. We forget the consciousness. Only that consciousness is I am. If consciousness is not there, no thought, no knowledge of an object, and no object. We are going a little. This master goes a step further. Terry is here, consciousness is. Clear? Terry is not there, consciousness is. How do you know? 
Are you aware of that? Did you get it? Brandy is there, consciousness is. Brandy is not, consciousness is. Are you getting it? I know a show, consciousness is. I don't know a show, consciousness is. It is always present. Object or object is there for me, consciousness is. Object is not there in front of me, consciousness is still there. And if consciousness is not there, no object, no thought, no stress, no suffering, no pleasure, consciousness is. You heard me, consciousness is. You did not hear me, consciousness is. You are aware, isn't it? You are aware that I'm not speaking and you are aware that I'm speaking. What is this awareness? This is I am. This is all pervading. This is ever present. Is this consciousness knowledge? Is this consciousness permanent happiness? That is what we are going to explore uh, while learning from this master. So master declares. Now what the master declares? Thought is there. Consciousness is. Thought is not there. Consciousness is. Did you get it? You know there is no thought in the mind. You know it. Who knows? Consciousness is. You have many thoughts. Consciousness is. Thought is not consciousness is because I know there is no thought. Thought is there. I know there is a thought. How do I know that I is pure consciousness? So he proves that I am pure consciousness. And then we will understand whether this consciousness is peace, happiness, love, and wisdom or not. At present, in a waking state, we understand that objects changes. There are millions of objects, so millions of thoughts. So we have millions of different types of knowledge, but behind there is only one consciousness. There is only one awareness. And what is that awareness? You cannot say that many awarenesses. There is only one awareness. That passes through millions of objects, millions of thoughts, millions of experiences. Awareness is there. If they are many, then today you are Brandy, tomorrow you are Jerry. <laughs> Do you see that? See, see his logic? See his logic. Clarity. Let the intellect be clear, become aware. And once we are aware, we understand what is there, consciousness is, what is not. Consciousness is, is still there, object is there, consciousness is, object is not there, consciousness is.
honey is there consciousness is honey is not there consciousness is because i know and that consciousness is only one that consciousness is me that is the real i that is the real self So by reasoning, we filter out what is one common factor. In a waking state, and that gives me one common factor is awareness. If awareness is not, no object, no thought, no stress, no love, nothing, only awareness. And that is how we enter into that state of mindfulness or meditation. This is what Ashokumagar Guruji used to teach. But it takes time. Let us start our non practice. Not a practice, but a non practice.